Good evening. Sports night goes into the 90s with a scheduled 10-rounder, a nine-dart finish, an eight-goal victory, and the enduring excitement of the third round of the FA Cup. Daly. Oh, he skipped past Sully. Three waiting in the centre for Aston Villa. Only goal! Stapleton, go! And the great cup hero of the past is the scorer. Nielsen and uh, Olney are the players in the near post area. Nielsen, oh, and in Norman Royd. Off the post and in, and the big lad's got it. Sellers flick. Nielsen's header out, back in by Miller, Stapleton's there, oh, it's been deflected in, it's gone in! Robottom, manages to turn, Butterworth, finds Neville, who also has space to turn. Robottom! Oh, what a goal! Unbelievable! Well, now, what can Norwich produce? In these last four and a half minutes, Bowen, Flick, oh it's one apiece, oh dear. Quinn, finally breaks the deadlock. Orlikson, kept in by Martin, Hughes, he's got a lot of room. And here's Robbins. This is McMahon. Steve Nichol crosses in for Rush. And there it is, the hat trick. John Barnes to Beardsley. Melville. Barnes. Faced by Robbie James, he's past Robbie James, faced by Thornburg, shot by Barnes. Falls to Nickel. Shit by Nickel. Goal number eight. More of Liverpool's replay goals later, but we're featuring Crew against Chelsea and Aston Villa against Blackburn and the goals from the rest of tonight's third round action. Third round of the FA Cup and making the headlines tonight away from our featured matches was well, certainly Roy Walker of uh, Ray Walker of Port Vale. He gets the goal that sets up victory at First Division Derby County. Scoreline Derby County 2, Port Vale 3, one of the shocks of the competition. Ray Wilkins and Roy Wegerley get their first goals for QPR who knock out Cardiff. Gary Parkinson of Middlesbrough gets the equaliser against Everton at Goodison Park. No breakthrough in extra time. They play again. Action from all tonight's replays in the programme. And the first replay we're featuring, Aston Villa against Blackburn, which produced high excitement on Saturday. Villa twice ahead, Blackburn twice back on terms to earn tonight's daunting replay at Villa Park. One of the form sides of the first division against Rovers from the second, John Motson, the commentator. Blackburn Scott Sellers was many people's man of the match on Saturday and at midday today he became a proud father when his wife presented him with a baby daughter who they're calling Hope. Well, he certainly gave Blackburn that with his equalising goal on Saturday. It was his tenth of the season. David Platt's total is 17. 13 of them have been scored here at Villa Park where he's been on the mark in all Villa's last seven home games, each of which have been won. The Villa team that Platt leads tonight shows one change. At number six, Kent Nielsen is replaced by Chris Price, a former Blackburn player, who comes in against his old club in a tactical move, which means Price will play as the right back, and number two, Kevin Gage, will be expected to mark Sellers on the Blackburn left. Blackburn are forced into a change at number five, where a hamstring injury to Keith Hill means a recall for 19-year-old David May. Not to be confused with his central defensive partner, number six, David Mayle. Same referee as Saturday, Trollford Mills of Barnsley and Blackburn Rovers in blue and white halves. Six times winners of the FA Cup against Aston Villa in their claret and blue, who've won it seven times. Sharing the record with Tottenham Hotspur. And Ormond Royd. 
And not a bad early cross. It was headed away by Mail. Here's Price. Good run by Chris Price against his old club. He went nearly all the way. Finally, Finnegan. And Finnegan again for Blackburn. Kennedy over on the right. Garner's up there too. This is Ke Kennedy. And Kennedy shot. Oh, what a goal! What a start for Blackburn Rovers. Andy Kennedy in 50 seconds. Well, a cup tie that reached great heights on Saturday starts with an explosive moment here. Andy Kennedy takes on Gareth Williams, cuts inside, left foot shot, a beauty. And that stunned the Aston Villa supporters and given Blackburn real belief. Well, Kennedy, who'd scored four in the last four games, now makes it five in five, but I doubt whether he's got a better one than that this season. This is Miller. Simon Garner, number 11, Sellers. And now Daly for the Villa. Price is to his right, Gage is here too. Ormanroy. Cowens. Right across, Daly couldn't quite make it, it'll come for Gage. Corner. Well, we're off to a flying start here. Now, Blackburn are going to be very careful on corner kicks because they let a goal in at Ewood Park on Saturday when it was flicked on and Ormanroy scored. Olney and McGrath, the players in the near post area. There's Ormanroyd again. And it's going to come out to Gage. Blackman breaking with Mail. Well, Villa beaten only once at home this season in the league. That was by QPR, but Blackburn start off here with Andy Kennedy as though they really mean business. What a good goal. Blackburn Rovers who've done so well to maintain their momentum this season after two bitter disappointments in the playoffs at the end of the last two campaigns. Great compliment to Don Mackay, their manager. Sellers. Sully. Daly. And Price. Now that's a good looking ball. Orman Royd's underneath it, so was May. And Geno didn't make it at all. Olney was the player challenging him. Gage, Platts in there too. Cowens. Oh, it's Olman Roy with a superb equaliser. And the whole team salutes the goal by Ian Olman Roy. 27 minutes gone, and whatever Kennedy can do. Orman Roy appears to be able to match. Cowens had the first shot. It span loose, and Orman Roy instantly into the far corner. We've seen two goals here right out of the top draw. You won't see two better shots than that in a long while. One each. Free kick given against Gage. Kennedy's header. Sellers. Reed. Stapleton. Reed again. And Kennedy's coming across McGrath. 
Miller to Garner. And Platt having to work ever so hard back in defence as captain. Cowens, that's not a bad ball, Daly, and Daly's through for Villa, and he's gone wide and scored. Oh, another admirable goal in its own way. For the Villa fans to appreciate and for Daly to celebrate. The first division team in the lead in the 33rd minute. Gordon Cowens passing so far has always been dangerous. Just the way that Daly got away from the defender, went round Terry Geno, stayed cool, 2-1 to Aston Villa, who therefore take the lead for the third time in the tie overall. And you had the feeling, even when Blackburn were leading, that Gordon Cowan's distribution from midfield could be a telling factor. It certainly was then. He got the ball forward early, and Daly's alertness and pace, and in the end, his composure were the reasons why Aston Villa put themselves into the best position they've been in tonight. Olney, Platt, that's a nice turn by the England man. It's Platt's shot that was disappointing, though. Williams. He's really running the game in midfield. This is Price. Cowens. Orman Royds in and a brave bit of goalkeeping by Geno, who was uh, injured in any event. But uh, the distribution from the midfield of Gordon Cowens reminds me of how he was playing when he was an England international. He just doesn't seem to need to look up at times. He knows where people are, and he's spreading the play, first one way, then the other. That was a telling sort of ball that Gunnar had to come and deal with. Gage. Mountfield, and here's Sellers. Simon Garner's off to the right, good position. And Kennedy wants it early in the middle. Garner's delayed, but he's on the ball still. Stapleton. Max Miller. There's going to be a booking here. Looks like Derek Mountfield. Mountfield speaking out of turn and getting caution for descent while the referee was also looking at a Blackburn player uh, on the ground needing attention. It's Scott Sellers, in fact. We're already in stoppage time at the end of the first half, but David May has quite a long throw. And uh, Kennedy's in there. But he picked it across, and a chance here. What a scramble. Simon Garner was in there, so was uh, John Miller. And neither of them could quite get the finishing touch. And Villa were a bit fortunate. And indeed... Blackman Rovers might have equalised in the last seconds of the half, but the goals we've seen here, if Marco van Basten had got the one that Andy Kennedy got, they'd have shown it all over Europe, probably for most of the next two or three days. Then the Villa fans saw Orman Royd equalise with an equally good shot in many ways, and Daly put them ahead in a six-minute spell, and the two clubs continue to produce cracking cup football. In fact, uh, right on the whistle, Blackburn could have equalised. David May with the long throw, and Kennedy is the problem here for Villa. He flicks the ball on, Miller comes in, Garner's waiting, Stapleton's also there, but it's Ormond who rather awkwardly but effectively got it away from Garner. And Aston Villa bring on substitute Paul Birch at the beginning of the second half. And uh, it looks to me as though they've switched Gage across to left back. And uh, Williams is the player who's gone off. <laughs> 
So the first half tactics in which uh, Gage and Price played down the right-hand side have been altered. And uh, Birch will now be the wide player on the right for Villa. In fact, uh, I think he started the game since uh, October, Paul Birch. He's usually been on the bench recently. Here's McGrath. And again, Stapleton. Miller. Oh, Garner through the middle. Took it down nicely, Simon Garner. Bustled a bit by Gage. Here comes Sellers. That's nicely done by Scott Sellers. It came off Gordon Cowns. Took the sting out of the shot from Sellers. Here's Birch. Oh, it's a good effort by the substitute who's just joined the game. And the one thing we have seen tonight, among uh, many other attributes in the game, has been some power shooting from distance. bring nearly everybody back. McGrath's up there. Oh. Not really away even now. And Blackburn living on their nerves. David May got involved in that last clash. McGrath actually had an earlier flick on. That's what they're aiming for with him and Olney on the near post. And well taken by Cherry Geno. He really imposed himself there and was actually knocked over by Derek Mountfield as he was running back. That referee, Trelford Mills, in the process of play, is going to have a word with Mountfield about that. Garner hanging on a bit and getting a free kick for his trouble against Mountfield. Here's Sully. It's Finnegan now for Blackburn. Good effort. Tony Finnegan, formerly with Crystal Palace. And certainly there's been players on both sides quite prepared to try from 25 yards in these two cup ties. And Blackburn, as you would expect for a second division side, no disrespect at all in that, are just finding now that Aston Villa's control is getting a bit uh, much for them. That was a typical example of it. Geno, a poor kick straight to Birch. Here's Daly. the cross you had the header and you had the save you couldn't ask for more well done Daly all his flick on away by Finnegan 
ever a move encapsulated the way this cup tie has been played across two games, it was that last Villa attack. It had everything. There's Ormond Royd again. And he would say... Uh, coming round just to confirm Trelford Mills thoughts that it was a corner Olney and Ormond Royd are now facing the kicker as uh, McGrath and Mountfield come forward again Ormond Royd nearly got there off my word Mountfield nearly did and Platt hooked it right across the goal it's a full-time job when uh, Villa are taking corners for Geno and his defenders to cope because they've got so much to offer at the moment Aston Villa not least in this attack Tony Daly started it up against Chris Sully again and twisting inside and outside and delivering a really good telling ball all is up Ormond Royd gets the header down and that was Geno with a very good piece of keeping McGrath, Birch. Here comes Nicky Reed. Finnegan, Sellers. And Sellers takes on Ormond Royd. And Stapleton's hovering behind Gage, you can see to the corner. Anyway, here's Sellers. He made room again. Kennedy heads it down, and Ormond Royd is now having to defend. Headed back in, and away by McGrath. Villa were... That was a foul, is that? I think uh, only was fouled before that ball went further down the right. But uh, Blackman made life uncomfortable for Aston Villa there from a series of crosses. Halfway through the second half, still 2-1 to Villa, who certainly can't afford to rest on that lead. Ormond Roy to Olney. Oh, Olney took that down well, but good challenging. Nicky Reid, now Finnegan. Stapleton and McGrath penalty was it yes Paul McGrath on Frank Stapleton penalty to Blackburn and more drama now did McGrath play the ball well if he tried to he was late and he caught Stapleton couldn't argue very much with that could you Andy Kennedy missed the last one Blackburn had, so Frank himself takes the responsibility, the 33-year-old Cup veteran, to take the kick. And brilliantly saved by Nigel Spink. And the Villa fans salute the goalkeeper as they did on Saturday. And Frank Stapleton, who I haven't seen, to be fair, take many penalties, he drove it low, but Spink read the way it was going to go. Blackman Rovers, who saw Nigel Spink defy them so many times on Saturday, now see him spread himself to make what could be the most important save of all. Simon Garner, Sellers. And the deep crosses for Gale. John Rose coming in. Oh, and I don't believe it. It's Simon Garner of all people. The club's record scorer had the chance there to equalise, and I've seen him put those away so many times. Scott Sellers played the ball back, and the long cross here 
first of all, watch the substitute Lenny John Rose on the knockback from Howard Gale. He might have got a shot in, but he completely missed it. And now Garner, well, he hit it hard enough, but it was over. Daly. Oh, he's away from Mail. Platts in the middle waiting. It's there. over Tony Daly gets past David Mayo and there's a slight touch on it and I think it was a defender anyway and Daly here goes to cross and watch David May own goal number five what a sad end to the tie for him making it 3-1 to Villa and now surely it is over John Rose, oh, and a brave piece of goalkeeping uh, by Nigel Spink and Howard Gale's in the middle of some trouble. Number 12, Howard Gale. We're in stoppage time. And what a disappointing end for 19-year-old David May, because that has to go down as an own goal. It's made it 3-1. And Aston Villa are on their way into the fourth round. It's Daly, the tricky man, whose contribution will be remembered in the end because he scored the second, made the third, and here's Mountfield to Birch. Well, we've been saying all the way through these two matches how exciting it's been. What about the last couple of minutes? <laughs> it could have been 2-2, and in the end it was 3-1. And when they look back on what will be a long road to Wembley, They'll remember the third round match between Aston Villa and Blackburn Rovers and Nigel Spink, who I suppose when all the incidents are analysed, would be remembered most for the penalty save from Frank Stapleton, which eventually was a major contributory factor to Villa going through. But two storming games, compelling football, exhilarating for the spectators, and it all finishes up in a replay. Aston Villa 3, Blackburn Rovers 1. Well, that's one of those things. I hit the ball very, uh, very well, but uh, the keeper guessed right. Uh, frustrating thing for me really was that he held the ball. <laughs> but that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, you know, there was other chances in the game for us really. But um, you've got to really put your, put penalties away. And uh, as I say, I made a good save, but I feel that I failed as well. But uh, that's the way it goes at the end of the day. Yeah, it was uh, obviously it's um, a pleasure to save a penalty, especially in front of the home fans. Um, you know, Frank st uh, struck it quite well, and I managed to hold on to it. But uh, you know, I, initially I guessed obviously which way I was, which way I was going to go. Frank made the point actually that that was the key that you held it. I mean, had it come back off you, of course, he could have followed in. Yes, uh, I was surprised myself that it stuck in <laughs> stuck in there a little bit. But uh, you know, he hit it with a good pace, and uh, I think probably the pace on the ball was was the uh, factor really. If it hit it a bit softer, you know, maybe it might might have popped out. Nigel Spink, certainly the hero, and Villa now at home to Port Vale, who had that great win at Derby tonight, which you will be seeing a bit later in our roundup. But next stop for Sports Night is Crewe, First Division Chelsea, perhaps rather grateful for a second chance against the Third Division side. The anticipated packed crowd at the little Gresty Road ground, where we join commentator Barry Davis. The magnetism of the FA Cup is clear everywhere you look around Gresty Road. The biggest crowd of the season here, some 7,000 and all but a few eager for their crew to complete the upset suggested at Stamford Bridge. The manager, Dario Grady, once a coach at Chelsea, keeps his starting lineup, but changes both substitutes, bringing in ex-Chelsea Dale Jasper. Steve Walters, who gave Crew the lead then, now has the chance to celebrate his 18th birthday of yesterday. And if he does so, no one will be happier than Kenny Swain, just a shade older, who began his considerable league career in a Chelsea shirt. One or two of the modern version of the Chelsea shirt have changed owners between Saturday and Wednesday. In come Peter Nicholas, just five weeks after a cartridge operation, and Gordon Dury recovered from an ankle injury. 
Lee drops down to substitute, while Clive Wilson joins Tony Dorigo on the injured list. Man in charge is John Key from Sheffield. He was saying what a good match the first match was. And before it, Dario Grady talked of the role of the little club in the FA Cup, having some fun, earning a bit of money, and just perhaps getting a victory. Tonight comes his chance. But Chelsea strengthened and nettled by recent criticism, not least from some of their own supporters. Murphy, Smart, Graham Roberts, Peter Nicholas, missed seven games during his timeouts. Back pass from Lasso, who starts in a left back position but surely will move forward. That's one by Jury. John Bumstead. Dixon, Dyson with him. Holds him off, or does he? No, he didn't. Very good cross. It's a bit close to Grey Goose, but there wasn't much room for manoeuvre. Joseph. Wilson. Joseph. Francis Joseph, been around a bit in his career, born in Kilburn. Walters with the free kick. Roberts header. Offside. Clark. Cheers for Steve Clark. He scored the uh, equalising goal and indeed was the only player booked in the match on Saturday. Nicholas Johnson. Nicholas, Kevin Wilson. Clark, shooting chance. Struck it well, and the goalkeeper made sure his body was behind it. Killed it. Johnson. Well on by Dixon to jury, the flag stays down, here's a chance, which is not taken. I will Chelsea live to rue that miss. He was running in cleanly. Grey Goose came to him well, stood. It just got a touch as the ball threatened to go through his legs, but really plenty of time for Dyson to clear. Bobby Campbell, the Chelsea manager. His team lost in the third round to Barnsley last year, 4-0, and he's had a few problems in the League Cup too. So currently in seventh place, having back in November led the first division. Jury hits it, and it's well saved. Came through the crowd, and he took it very well indeed. It got through the edge of the wall, got a touch too off Walters. Edwards again. Clayton spreads it out, finds Kenny Swain. 
who turns into trouble. And stopped by Kevin Wilson. This is Dixon. And still... Goalkeeper spread himself well. Came back off his boots. Cutler in the middle, and Besson takes. This time it was Dixon, played it onto his left, and the goalkeeper saved it with his uh, shin bones. Edwards has to come back a bit. Smart goes forward, is square of him now, in a bit of space. Edwards didn't see him. That's a good turn by Cutler. Lasso and crew will have to watch the throw throws out to him because he's very, very quick. And it's a beautifully taken goal by Kerry Dixon. 31 minutes, no hesitation that time. And the few who travel from London show their pleasure and Dixon's precise finishing to Kevin Wilson's pass it's his 13th goal of the season but it proved to be unlucky for crew okay against Johnson incident was actually rather further forward than the ball is placed. The crew not concerned about that. Kenny Swain, player coach, has come to take it. Well, often you have two player coaches on the pitch. Not the best of headers from Nicholas, but it worked for him. That's a lovely turn by Walters. Joseph. Space for Walters. Coming in on the far side. Murphy's header. Well, the youngster orchestrated all that. And showed what a prospect he is. He was an apprentice at Crewe before going on to the uh, FA School of Excellence. And looks to be uh, a guiding light in this contest for the home side. Joseph. The run was right to left. The run is now left from Clayton. Monk, who was well alive to it. Joseph does well! And the fortune was with Besant as Clayton came in. Lovely turn, though, by Joseph. Wilson. And Dixon gets away. And the Grey Goose stoops to conquer. There's no doubt that quick use of the longer ball is finding the gaps for Chelsea. They were rescued by Grey Goose with his fingertips. Edwards, met by Moncou, going for the corner. Midwinter, maybe, but the sack rising. Great turn by Clayton. It's so simply taken by Besant. Stack by the soap. They showed too much of it. But even so, 
Brooks is going to be a good player, in my opinion, Graham Rousseau. Seen him a couple of times. Major asset, his pace. He's somewhat restricted in his position this evening. But showing his versatility. And Dave Besant, a few seconds ago, showing what a big fellow he is. Made it look very simple after an excellent turn by Clayton. Roberts. <laughs> and the free kick is given in the end. And one or two complaints going on involving Nicholas and Roberts and Dyson. And the referee has his hand in his back pocket. And the book in his hand, and I suspect. Yes, indeed. Not for the first time in his life, the name of Graham Roberts has been written down in the referee's notepad. Referee got slightly in the way, but the challenge was certainly late, and he was caught twice, in fact, for Sir Aidan Murphy. Clark. Peter Nicholas. Lasso, push and run. Good piece of play. Not a bad try either by John Bumstead. Simplest game in the book if you're quick. Just push it and go. And he hit a good cross and he looked up first. Walters. And Clark came off the worse for that. The referee endeavouring to keep play going, but Clark made no attempt to get the ball then. Went straight into Walters, who he clearly thought got him a few seconds earlier. But that was deliberate, and I must say I doubt whether Walters' challenge was. Referee allowed play to go on, and Clark took the law into his own hands. deliberately stepped on the back of his heel and it's yellow the cards and Clark booked at Stamford Bridge is booked also at Cresty Road Swain's free kick bit of push and shove in the area Lasso went down. Clark. That's useful. Dixon. Two in the middle for Chelsea. Jury and Wilson. Did it stay in? It did indeed. And it's 2 nothing, and Dury is the scorer. In fact, the ball had gone out. In fact, the ball had gone out. So it curled out and back in before Dury met it with his head. So it remains at one. So he fell before trying to go through the, the sandwich. There's no denying Chelsea's determination here, though. Said at the start they'd been nettled by recent results, not least Saturdays. Joseph is offside, he's offside, it won't count. Crowd on their feet, but it won't count. Flag had been up quite a while. 
got faces of disappointment. None more than that of the score. And only a few seconds ago, Crew thought they were two down. And the ball had just gone out before Dury met it. Lusso. Actually, Bobby Campbell calls him Lusox. That's well played out. But then possession lost. Chelsea matching it. Johnson. Oh, Chase for Cutler, but the Norwegian is there in cover. Walters saw what was going to happen. Oh, great play! It's loose for a moment, but a marvellous piece of play by Stephen Walters. The shimmy in the middle of that was superb. He saw what was going to happen early, took the ball away. Now look at Roberts. Good stop at the end of it. Kenny Swain. That's a good deep cross. And an excellent save from Besant. Probably the best cross that uh, Crew have produced on the evening. And it came for their most experienced player. All bar two and a goalkeeper in the area for crew. Joseph. Still Joseph. Too strong for Edwards on the far post. What a lovely cross from Kenny Swain. A foot movement and the lovely flick away and it needed to be very good by Besant. Take by Edwards. Dixon. Yes! What a shame from Crew's point of view, but all credit to Kerry Dixon. At the start of the show for Crew in the first match at Stamford Bridge. Made a blind pass, but Kerry Dixon made him live to regret. Prepared to go wide. Hit it well with his left. Good goal. And the first division side had the breathing space and one suspects the victory. <laughs> Met by Roberts, Joseph, Edwards. Still with the chance. Met by Lasso, who's had a very good game and showed what a versatile player he is. Here he is again. I mean, Campbell has a find there. I don't think there's any doubt about that. To Chelsea, the spoils from Kerry Dixon, the finish. A visit for Bobby Campbell and his team to Ashton Gate in round four. But generous and thoroughly deserved applause. For both sides, a real cup tie, but to Dario Grani, great credit for a team that endeavoured all the way through to play football, and which has among its number more than one name to note. In fact, I'll give you two, Jason Smart and Steve Walters. In the end, experience and status 
decided. Drew Alexandra nil, Chelsea two. Kerry, what was the difference between uh, Saturday and tonight? Um, I think it was the resolution of the lads, you know. We, we, we want to go far in this cup for our supporters. I mean, they've travelled up here um, as many as it can possibly get into the ground. Um, we felt we let them down a little bit Saturday and uh, we, we knew we had to come and get a result here tonight. Now, those who travelled up, you would count as the real supporters. Sometimes at Stamford Bridge, bigger crowds, you get quite a bit of stick, don't you? Well, I mean, we can understand some of their frustrations, you know, on Saturday um, at home to crew in the FA Cup. We haven't had a cup run for a long time, and uh, I can understand the supporters wanting us to do well in this competition, and I think that was, uh, that was what made them a little bit frustrated Saturday and give us a little bit of stick, but we can understand that, and I hope that they can uh, get behind us in future games. So those are two featured matches. Let's confirm all tonight's FA Cup details with a reminder that we'll have a goals roundup of tonight's other games a bit later. But here's tonight's score lines. Aston Villa 3, Blackburn 1 we've seen. Bradford City 0, Charlton 3. Robert Lee, Paul Williams and Andy Jones for Charlton. Crew 0, Chelsea 2. And second division beating first. Derby 2, Port Vale 3. An own goal by Rob Hindmarsh, Ray Walker and Nicky Cross for Port Vale. Everton 1, Middlesbrough 1. Kevin Sheedy gave Everton the lead. Gary Parkinson equalised 15 minutes to go. Goodison Park next Wednesday for the replay. Norwich 2, Exeter 0, Rosario and Gordon. Oldham 1, Birmingham 0, Rick Holden. And Ray Wilkins and Roy Wegley, the scorers for Queen's Park Rangers, who beat Cardiff by two goals to nil. Well, this is how the FA Cup fourth round draw now looks with most of the issues resolved. Chelsea go to Bristol City. It's Norwich City against Liverpool. Aston Villa go through to face Port Vale. And one of the other highlights in that top half of the draw, Hereford United there against Manchester United. And further down, well, Sheffield Wednesday, they still wait to see if they face Middlesbrough or Everton. One other issue still to be decided there, Manchester City or Millwall to face Cambridge United. We're guaranteed a London derby now, Arsenal against Queen's Park Rangers and it's West Bromwich Albion against Charlton. Matches tonight in Scotland, the B&Q Scottish Premier Division, St Mirren 2, Dunfermline 0, but St Mirren stay in the bottom two. Division 2, East 5, 4, Kilmarnock 2, East Stirling 2, Brekin 0 and Queen of the South 1, Dumbarton 4. So action from tonight's six other replays before the end of the programme. The story of last night's three replays now, though, and if there was a feeling that goals were in short supply on Saturday, well, Liverpool made up for that at Anfield last night. Gerald Sinstat on Liverpool against Swansea. If you're only as good as your last match, Swansea's reputation as FA Cup wonders lasted just over three days. 20 minutes into last night's replay, they may even have been thinking that perhaps Anfield wasn't as intimidating as all that. But it was. Staunton sowed the first seed of doubt for the third division side. Barnes reaped the harvest. Once ahead, Liverpool were unforgiving. Beardsley's corner, Whelan's goal. 2-0. Then came an exhibition of passing. Barnes had started it and ambled off to wait patiently for the ball to find its way back to him. 3-0 at half-time. The second half belonged to Ian Rush. The Sane's presence in the penalty area provided the flick on for Rush's first. After Beardsley had made it five, Rush collected another against a Swansea defence who were beginning to get the message. Rush's hat-trick arrived courtesy of Nickel. Another header, firm, precise and economical. Barnes by now may have been thinking hat-tricks himself, but when his shot was half-blocked, it was Nickel who enjoyed the spin-off. So beautifully done, even Swansea must have enjoyed it. Well, almost. The last of the non-league banner waivers were Darlington, at home to Cambridge United, who are in yellow. After half an hour, the Vauxhall Conference side took the lead. McJanet's cross didn't look too demanding, but Vaughan punched the air, and Darlington were ahead. At the start of the second half, Darlington thought they'd scored again. Stephen certainly put the ball in the net, 
but the goal was ruled out, apparently for handball. From there, it was all downhill for Darlington. Taylor scored his 14th goal of the season. Three minutes later, Philpott set off on a run from deep in his own half that earned full marks for stamina and for coolness under pressure at the end. Probability became certainty when Dublin made it 3-1, leaving Darlington's manager Brian Little to contain his disappointment. Archie claims to have headed the ball, but it's, it's like, I mean, Archie will, would obviously say that, he probably thinks he has done that, uh, only perhaps your cameras can prove whether that's right or not. Uh, but he felt he headed the ball, um, and uh, I think the linesman seemed to give a goal, but the referee disallowed it. But, you know, that's, that's what the referee's there for, to make decisions. It's his decision. He obviously has done a decision which he feels is right. Um, but we never... Although, as, I think, as I say, till 60 minutes, I always felt we were the better side, and then their goal came right out of the blue, a great shot, um, and we were always chasing the game now. Millwall and Manchester City were meeting for the third time in 10 days. City won the league game, Saturday's cup tie was goalless. But last night at the Den, a cross from Stevens reached Carter, and City are probably still holding the inquest into how the ball found its way into the net. Millwall held that lead for just over an hour. But then Hendry got his head to a free kick with devastating timing. One all, ten minutes left. Two minutes from time, Hinchcliffe, who'd taken the free kick for Hendry's goal, had a gallop down the left, and Allen could have won the tie. But the scoreboard didn't flicker then, or in extra time, so there'll be a second replay. 